Hello everybody, it's good to be with you in your small groups today and we're in a season for our church that we call Heart for the House and so some of you will have heard our Heart for the House message this last Sunday, some of you at the West Shore campus it's coming up this next Sunday but we're in an exciting season of generosity where we get to consider what God is asking us as a church to do together to really make a difference um, in our house so that we can have an impact beyond. And so hopefully you're feeling encouraged and inspired already about that concept. And I want to just build on the concept today of generosity. And um, this is a big topic. Absolutely it is. And, and generosity is something that we do talk about in church and some people have some preconceived ideas about, but um, it's a very important topic in the Bible. In fact, there's over 2,300 verses about uh, money, possessions, and giving combined together. That's almost twice as many verses as there are in the Bible about faith and prayer combined. So this is an important topic. Jesus addressed it many times, and it's something that we need to pay attention to. And I want to be able to discuss some of these, um, these concepts and challenges in our small groups today. So the topic of generosity, uh, the, the definition of generosity is the readiness or liberality in giving. And so it is about finances. And I know a lot of times we could say, you know, well, generosity can apply to a lot of areas of our lives. And as Christians, it certainly should. We should be people that are generous um, with our time and with our energy, but generosity needs to flow into our resources. And there's a very important reason for that. And that's because money has the potential to have great power over us and to hold great control over us. And generosity is the best way to be free of the power that money would have over us. And that's a natural thing that happens in our world. And, and so God's given us this secret weapon to unlock the power that money has over us. And that weapon is generosity. Generosity fuels freedom, actually. We talk a lot about freedom and finding freedom in small groups. And I believe that it's actually in this context of a small group that you can have honest conversations about what God's speaking to you, about your concept of generosity, maybe what struggles you have, what challenges you have with that. And, and that can help us let go of the power that money has over us. So um, we, often, we often think of the power that money has in terms of people having too much money and not doing good with it. And it's easy for us to not put ourselves in that situation and think, well, I certainly don't have too much money. In fact, sometimes it feels like I barely have enough, right? Especially in Victoria, it's difficult, it's expensive. Going to the grocery store is very expensive. And so we understand that. But I think it's important for us to shift our mindset and understand that um, money can also have power over us when we're obsessing about it, when we're actually obsessively um, checking our budget and, and thinking that we don't have enough. Don't get me wrong, budgets are good. We, we love Dave Ramsey, we love the concepts of you know, getting out of debt and living free, but the point of, of everything that he does actually is so you can live a generous life, so that you can be free to be generous and fund the kingdom and live in a way that nobody else does. And so we, we recommend that you have a budget, but what I would say is just leave room for generosity. When Dave Ramsey says every dollar has an assignment, um, I still think we can assign room for generosity. We can be prepared to be generous. We can plan for it and it can also be spontaneous. It can be spirit led as God leads us if we have margin already planned into our budgets. And so there's many verses about generosity and about money. We're going to just touch on a few today. Matthew 6, 21 says, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Notice the importance of that. Your heart isn't there first and then your treasure follows. Um, your heart goes where your treasure already is. Treasure is anything that, that we value above all else and the thing that motivates us to action. That's what our treasure is. So it can be money, it can be power, it can be fame. Um, it can be many different things that we value above all else. As Christians, we're called to value the kingdom of God above all else. And when we live that way, then our heart will follow our treasure to that place. And so you, I think the order there is very important. People whose treasure is in heaven can't be owned by their possessions. They value the currency of heaven, which is generosity, and they use their earthly treasure, the, the money that they have on earth, to purchase heavenly treasure, heavenly gold, which can never lose its value. 
It's a beautiful concept and it's a reality in the kingdom of God. 1 Timothy 6, 7 tells us to put our hope in God. It tells us to do good, be rich in good deeds, be generous and willing to share. And you know what I love about that is you can actually only share what you have. God doesn't ask us to share beyond what we have. He knows that we need to have our needs taken care of and he's not asking us to give what we don't have. He's just saying, be generous and be willing to share what you have. Notice willingness is the key and that's a heart posture. There are so many promises in the Bible for a generous person. I'm just gonna list a few for you, not without, without verse references, but you can certainly look up the 2300 verses if you want to. If you're gonna have a really long small group, you can look them up. But here's what the Bible says, um, promises for generous people. It says they will prosper, they will be blessed, they will lack for nothing. Their children will be a blessing. Wow, okay, so it's extending into the next generation now. Good will come to them. They will take hold of the life that is truly life. That's the kingdom living um, aspect of this. This is life that lasts beyond the life we can see. They will lay up treasures in heaven. I know that's that can be sort of a trite concept. In fact, our kids and I, we kind of use that as a joke, like, oh, you got some treasures in heaven for taking out the garbage. You got jewels in your crown, you know, and, and we can joke about it, but let's remember this is a real concept. There are eternal treasures that are literally going to last forever. And isn't that something we wanna be sowing into? Not something that's gonna last for 80 or 90 years, God willing, but for all of eternity. So you're gonna lay up treasures in heaven when you're generous. The Bible also says God will throw open the floodgates and pour out so much blessing there will not be room enough to store it. That's specifically talking about tithing, that verse. But that's a pretty incredible promise. He's going to throw open the floodgates and pour out so much blessing there won't even be room to contain it. That's God's promise. So I'd love for us to talk about a few of these concepts and a few of the, the challenges that we that we encounter when it comes to generosity. What, what is our greatest challenge in being generous? What stops generosity in our lives? This is something you can talk about in your small groups. Um, maybe sometimes we feel like generosity is undeserved. You know, I worked hard for this money and, and this person that maybe I'm giving to didn't do anything to deserve it. Um, we can kind of have a master and a slave mentality. We can also have a scarcity mentality where, like I said before, it's like I can barely make ends meet. I can barely pay my bills myself. I don't have enough to give away. But let's remember that we operate and live in this upside down kingdom where the first will be last. And God promises, I mean, I just gave you a few of the promises, but you're going to prosper. You're going to be a blessing. You're going to lack nothing. You're going to have everything you need when you live generously. So this is a shift in our mindset for sure. I'd love for you to talk in your small groups about where you've seen generosity at work in your own life. Maybe you've been on the receiving end of generosity. Let's share those stories. Let's encourage each other. Uh, Proverbs 11.25 says, A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Some versions say, um, if you water others, you will be watered. I love that picture. You're, you're watering something so that it can grow, but you're also going to be watered. In the Living Bible, that same verse says this, it's possible to give away and become richer. It's also possible to hold on too tightly and lose everything. Yes, the liberal man shall be rich. We're not talking about politics here. We're talking about generosity. And by watering others, he waters himself. So there's always a blessing for us. God is an extravagant God. He sees our hearts. It's not about amounts. Let's just be clear. It's never about amounts. It's about the willingness. It's about the heart. You know, the story of the widow's might in, in Luke, where the widow comes and gives two tiny little copper coins. And Jesus actually says, this poor widow has put in more than all the others. And so it's about a heart posture. God sees our hearts and he's an extravagant God. So let's discuss the heart issues behind generosity. And, and I'd love for us to share today about what God is speaking to us about this topic. Thanks for your attention. I'd love to pray for you as you go into your discussion time. Thank you, Lord, for your great generosity towards us. Thank you that we could never repay you what we owe you. But we are grateful that we can partner with you in this beautiful kingdom of God 
coming to earth as it is in heaven. And we just ask, Lord, that you would unlock generosity in our lives so that money has no control over us and we are not governed by the powers of this world, but by the powers of the kingdom of heaven. And so, Lord, we pray that you would open our eyes, you would open our hearts, you would make us willing, and you would help us to encourage each other in the things that God has asked us to do so that we can be a blessing and we in turn can be blessed. Thank you, Lord, for your, um, your blessing on every person. Thank you for your provision. We pray right now for the one who, who needs a special provision, even this week. Lord, would you meet their needs in a supernatural and abundant way because you're an abundant and extravagant God. We trust you with everything that we have. We love you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.